Welcome to another instructional video. Today we're going to be using the website soundslice.com to make a complete drum transcription. So what we're going to do together is we're going to find a drum video that's already on the internet. We're going to clip it out, we're going to put it into SoundSlice, and we're going to make a finished product that's good for YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So let's get started. Okay, welcome everyone. So these are the three things you're going to need to get started. One is some sort of video editor. I'm using Wondershare Filmora 9. It's about $60 a year. So pretty cheap there. 4K video downloader is what I use to get the actual videos from YouTube into SoundSlice, which we'll go over in a second. And then you need to create an account for free at SoundSlice.com. So to start out, we need to get a video. And if you type in drum solo or drum fill, there's a bunch of shit that comes up that's way too complicated to put into a five minute video. So that is the time that I'm trying to get to today is five minutes or less. So. I chose uh, this video, uh, drum fills that have names, and we're just gonna use the first 30 seconds. So here's a, here's a bit of a preview. Okay, so pretty straightforward. We're gonna take this YouTube link, and we're gonna put it into our 4K video downloader. We'll go high quality, we'll make sure we download video. High quality, download, okay, that's going. Okay, so we have our video. I'm just gonna keep that open here for a second, right? And then we're gonna go to our sound slice page and we're gonna choose this button at the top that says new slice. And we're gonna entitle this uh, transcription walkthrough artist is me. Okay, so now we have our slice created and named. The next thing I always do is add the recording. So and I have a upgraded account so I can actually upload any audio or video I want. And that's the reason why I used 4K Video Downloader. If you just want to use the YouTube link, you can do that as well. We'll just do that for time. And as you can see, the drum fills that have names comes up, all right? Now the next thing we want to do is actually map out our like score. So we're going to notate and sound slice. We're going to choose drum kit. And we are going to select the radio button that says yes to tab. You're going to want to do this and if you create the track, I don't know of a way to, to re-add it later. So uh, make sure you hit you have tab selected. That's gonna give you a measure and it's gonna give you a, well, it's gonna give you a regular measure and it's gonna give you a tablature. And the easiest way of navigating through the tablature is go to help and you can see all of the numbers and their corresponding instruments. The ins instrumentation is all mapped out. So after a while, you'll just kind of know but I still go back here and I'll say, okay, what's, uh, you know, China symbols 53 or whatnot, I think. Yeah, 52. So, and it'll also play the sound within Sound Slice as well. So that's the basic setup. As you can see, once you upload the recording, there is the sync point, which we're gonna get to in a second. A quick rundown of all of the options in Sound Slice. The measure tool is gonna be for adding and removing measures, deleting measures, time signature. All this is pretty self-explanatory. You can add a metronome marking. There's some things for like guitar and melodic instruments only, like here's some accidentals and treble and bass clef and th things like that. Obviously drums, we're not gonna have to worry about that. So the note head tool is gonna be for basically everything to do with grouping your notes together, including triplets and fivelets and sevenlets and things like that. The accent or articulation tool is gonna be different type of accents. If you wanna make ghost notes, if you wanna make cross sticks, rolls, hi-hat openings and closings, things like that. More notations. The most common thing I use this for is flipping the note heads, which there's not a way to do that or automatically, but I'll show you a convenient way at the end. You just highlight everything and click that once and it flips all the stems up. And then if you do wanna do dynamics, I'll show you a, a convenient way at the end. You just highlight everything and click that once and it flips all the stems up. And then if you do wanna do dynamics or separating notes, there's a shortcut for that. I just wanna backtrack real quick. I haven't done anything yet, but if you put a note in, as you can see, it plays there, as you can hear, it plays the actual instrumentation for you. So if you're curious about like, oh, I, I didn't know which, which was which, you can kind of hear that that's the kick drum. But anyway, so once that's done, if you hover over the different notes, you're gonna see that there's shortcuts. So I wanna make sure we go over that now. Uh, not, every, not everyone has shortcuts, but like instead of going through an accent, you just hit semicolon and it will put the accent in there or ghost notes just O. So you can do that or you can make a 
slash or you can make it an x you can you can do a lot of different things more on that later uh that will probably come up organically uh within the actual transcription the rest of these i really don't use that a whole lot you can add like expressions if you want to say hey splashy hi-hat is something i did before in italics okay cool so you know we have that other than that grouping by sections things like that and then if you want to go remove the tab you would go to the drums and or you go to this icon and go and just click on that until it vanishes and then it takes the tab away. So obviously we're gonna wanna do that at the end. So I know that's a quick run through of everything. Uh, again, I mean, a lot of this is just process of elimination and some of it you won't even use. Some of it you it will be personal preference. So we're gonna close the editor for now and we're gonna go back here. Or actually, we're gonna keep the editor open. We're gonna map out our measure. So we're doing about 30 seconds worth of music. So let's just do like 20 bars or something to start. And again, you can just click on the measure and I'm just hitting the, the, the right key. That's, that's all I'm doing. To start out, um, we're gonna map out our sync point. By using the letter T on the keyboard, you're actually gonna create the first measure. So then once we start playing, then we can decide how long the measures are, what time signatures are, and all that good stuff. So I'm just gonna play the video, and then I'm gonna start hitting the T when on the downbeats of new measure. Okay, so this thing's pretty smart. It, if you notice the tss, 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 the little thing in the beginning was just him hitting the hi-hats, I think he hit it like six times. I don't really want to make that the first bar. I want to make the first bar when he, when he starts playing the fill. And then a couple of the things, because he was messing around, are, are different time signatures. But I'm glad that he did that because now we can actually kind of navigate through it. So we have our sync points. And I, I try to spam the save button because it's ideal. Trust me. You, you don't want to be stuck in a spot where you're an hour deep into work and... You, your computer powers off or, or you lose internet for a second and, or something like that. So we only sync nine bars. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna use my delete bar and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So delete two more. Okay, so we just have nine bars of music. The 10th bar is the downbeat. So now that that's done, I'm gonna click to get off of the sync and then here's what I prefer to do, okay? If you click on this gear icon down here, we're gonna go to use horizontal view, okay? And I know that didn't really change a whole lot for this because it's such a small piece of music, but when you have something that's more than nine bars, then that this is what you're gonna to wanna to do. So you're gonna to go to the, wherever your preference is for this. I personally like to have this in the center. So as you can see, everything looks a little more manageable. And then we can kind of crank this up for the sake of the example because it's such a small amount or you can just hit control plus on your keyboard. Now we're ready to get started with the actual transcription. So where to start, it can be tricky. So what we wanna do is kind of think about what he was doing and just kind of make a decision on where to start. So let's, let's go back to the beginning. One thing is he is hitting uh, eighth notes with his, with his left foot on the hi-hat. And the first note is a flam. It appears to be a grace note of the floor tom and an accent on the snare. And I think it's chat -ta -da -da, chat -ta -da -da, chat -ta -da -da, chat -ta -da -da, chat So it sounds like what's called a herta. Really what that is, uh, it's just dat -da -da, dat -da -da, dat -da -da, dat -da -da, which is one sixteenth note and two thirty second notes. If I'm losing you, just stick with me, okay? A lot of this can be watered down and made a lot easier. Don't don't be anxious or something if you're listening to a video and you don't and you're you don't understand what they're doing right away. Trust me. If you look down here, there's this little thing that says speed. We can actually slow this sucker down as slow as we want. So it's got an aerial view, or you know, on videos where maybe we don't see what he's playing, we can slow it down so we can hear things a little slower. But I think that's the main rhythm. So we know that it's a herta, one sixteenth to thirty second notes, and eight notes on the hi hat with a left foot. Whew. Pretty complex for just uh, you know the first measure, but hey, you gotta start somewhere. I'm gonna do my first note, obviously on the downbeat of one, and what I prefer to do is have anything that's like top, like cymbal, hi-hat, cowbell, anything on the top line, and then kick drum on the bottom, and then kind of anything in between, kind of like what it's written as in the actual measure. So kick drum will be at the bottom, and snare will be in the middle, toms will be kind of cascading down, and then anything that cymbals is typically on top. So that being said, we know the first note is on the floor tom, and the floor tom is just gonna be, a, we're, we're gonna use 45, okay? And 45, you can use whatever variations of toms you want. It's not, I don't think anybody's going back and saying, oh, that's that's wrong or whatever. It needs to be relatively correct 
on a five piece drum kit, 45 is the floor tom. I use 50 for the high tom and I use 48 for the middle tom. You can, and that's just, if somebody has a huge setup like six toms or something, it's just easier for me to navigate. But again, personal preference. Shortcut on the grace note, you can just hit Z, okay? We know that it's a flam between the snare and the floor tom, so the snare is gonna be 38, and I like to have my snare right there. It, again, it doesn't. you can put them all on the same line if you want. It really doesn't matter. It's just for organizationally, this is just the way I like to do it. A snare is the third space from the bottom, so we have our first note. Now, what I don't know is what the second note is, so we gotta go back and listen again. Okay, so it appears to be a flam in between the floor tom and the snare, a few hits on the snare, and then back to the same thing. So it, it sounds like the same phrase repeating. So I think it's this. Okay, so I didn't put a grace note here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of the shortcuts here. Insert beat to the left, okay? And then I'm gonna add a snare and I'm gonna hit the, the Z key is the shortcut for a grace note. So there we go. So it's flam 2 32nd 16th, flam 2 32nd 16th. So this should be a flam. I'll try not to talk when the sound's going. Okay, so now we need to figure out how he comes out of the fill, so. So the last beat is, and sometimes I like just like to say it out, chat da 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 So uh, pretty straightforward there. I'm pretty confident that's the measure. So uh, he's also ghost, it sounds like he's ghosting the, the middle note, so for right now I'm just gonna accent the flam, and that's using semicolon. And we're gonna save. All right, awesome. So we have chat da 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 da, and we know he's doing the hi hats on the eighth notes. So we're gonna do that. So just to talk through this, sometimes it's like a little bit more difficult. So the two thirty second notes equal one sixteenth note. So if this is one, right here, this is beat one, E, and, uh. So to know where to put this, where an eighth note is, it's just one E and this is and. Same thing, one E and, and then one E and, okay. So we're gonna save that again. So now let's give it another listen. Okay, and he ends with a crash, so we know that. And that's, that's pretty straightforward, okay. And again, if you want to do this as you go or or not, you go to this 8VA, flip everything up, like that, okay? Now, as we listen again, we're gonna look listen for any like subtleties. If you have a keen ear, the last hi-hat foot is actually splashed. So there's not really a notation for a splashed hi-hat foot. So this is kind of where I would do something like this. Splash, splashy hi-hat, and I already have that in there from before. So now I can say, hey, on that note, splash the hi-hat. Or I could just do a an articulation and do maybe something like that. Uh, but I mean, again, it's probably gonna have to get written out because there's not a splashy hi-hat foot command. Also, if you noticed, I put this grace note in the wrong place. So if you're thinking that the whole time, then that's awesome that you're paying attention. So we're going to want to put that grace note right there because it's on the floor tom and not on the snare drum. Okay, perfect. Now the only other thing we might want to do is sticking. And for the sticking, we're gonna to go to this TXT. We're gonna to go down to the bottom. And then we wanna make sure that we we notate that it's a left flam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a lowercase r and an uppercase L, okay? And then I'll do, typically I don't write this out again. I mean, that's just, it just means similar. So left flam, right, left, right, all together. And then if you really want to be thorough, which normally, honestly, I wouldn't be for this particular thing. Okay, cool. Save. Let's listen to it. Okay, it's 
sounds good. And then if you want to check it and see how it sounds synthetically, okay, you're going to go down to recording video and you're just going to go to synthetic. Now this is actually going to play the drum sound. The one thing that it's not going to line up is BPM, so you're going to have to eyeball this. I'm just going to slow it down to 100 because I, I don't think it's 120, but I could be wrong. Okay, obviously that's way too fast. Let's just slow it down to 60. Okay. I mean, that sounds sounds pretty close. Okay, cool. We can go back to the recording. Let's speed it up. Regular speed again. That's pretty close to what he's playing. Uh, it sounds like he might be kind of swinging it a little bit, but that's just adding feel and you can't really write feel. So as you can see, all we used was Tom, snare and uh, kick and actually I don't think we use any kick so we would need to listen typically I use I listen with headphones for kick to kind of isolate that but let's let's listen again see if we can catch it I'm gonna say he's not using any kick and can't really tell if he is or not so this is where you just put on headphones and make a judgment call if you if he was using a kick uh, it'd probably be here so if you really want to add that on, if you think that's what he's doing, uh, maybe you can go back to synthetic and it's relative if you can't even see what he's doing. Let's go to the second measure. The tab, as you can see, is pretty well organized. You can see everything's on the same kind of trajectory here. So it's easy to read. It's easy to, to go back and make changes if you're you know proofreading and you find out maybe there is an accent or he, you, know, you want to make these ghost notes. You could just go to you can make those ghost notes if you want to. And also, uh, this is obviously Linux based because it's case sensitive. So if you have your caps lock button on, it's actually not going to work. Okay, measure two. So I'm gonna go over and I'm just gonna click here and then I'm gonna play it. Okay. So again, sounding it out, I think the top is hi-hat, so I'm just going to do that first. And I'm doing it the shortest way possible. So like honestly, if the pattern doesn't change, you can highlight all the notes, hit your copy, and it will just paste the whole phrase in there. And I think he has like this sort of pulse. Okay, so we're going to do that. Again, I'm a compulsive saver. Okay, and he starts with a cymbal crash. Well, we're actually gonna do this. Stay with me. Gonna delete two 16th notes, and we're actually gonna make these eighth notes. Okay, because he actually, one of these is a crash, which I normally see 49. If you hit the X key, you can actually make it into a X note head, okay? And that's just easy to read that that's, you know, the line above the hi-hat is usually the crash symbol. This line is usually the ride symbol. And again, keen eye, he just has these little subtle things that he's doing. But if you look at the video, you can see that he went crash and then he stomped the uh, hi-hat with his left foot. So let's go. Kick drum is 35. We finally have a kick drum to mess with here. Okay, so this is actually gonna be this rhythm. And what I'm doing is I'm just inserting a beat because he actually plays boom, boom, cat. Okay, boom, boom, cat. And I think it's just bub, 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 cat. So I just like to go in there and if that's pretty close to what it is, then that's fine. And of course, we're gonna check it multiple times. Okay, so he actually... So I'm gonna remove this, make this an eighth note because he actually plays an open hi-hat here with the snare. 
crash and kick together, stomps the hi-hat and the and, boom, bukat, and then the snare is actually gonna have an open hi-hat with it. And so synthetically, so you can kind of hear that. And really, it's just a matter of what your preference is. Like the speed isn't gonna match and there's probably a lot of variables as to why. And it sounds like what he did was, Okay, I'm gonna slow this down just so you can hear the whole phrase here. So he plays in the hi-hat opening on the second to last beat and then the bass drum is the last uh, 16th note and then right before a flam. So we're gonna save this again. Flip our notes. Okay, save it. That isn't nine bars of music, but I wanna show you how to actually make the video as well. So this is gonna be our two measures of music. Okay, and also, if you want it to scroll while you're proofreading, you actually need to close the editor. And I can't see if he's hitting another right hand here, but again, that's just gonna be one of those things that if you can't see it in the video, it's gonna be a little bit tougher to actually Confirm. For the sake of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the rest of the measures. So we got two measures of our video. All right, now we need to actually make a recording of this. And this is where our 4K video downloader is gonna come in handy. So I'm going to stop here for a second. First of all, I'm gonna take the tab away, which I showed you earlier. Go to this icon, go to drums, and then turn the tab off. Okay, and that just gives you something nice and clean. You're gonna turn the editor off. So I'm gonna go to my uh, record PC screen within my editor here. And I'm just gonna specify just this area right here. And I'm actually gonna pull out the snipping tool so I can kind of show you. But when it asks for like a target area, you're just gonna wanna select all that, okay? And that's gonna give you a nice like scrolling view. So I'm gonna do that right now, I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have my measure of music here. Okay, and it's gonna be kind of echoey because you're listening to the speakers and my microphone on my screen. So I'm going to make this a little bigger here. And then this is where the 4K video uh, downloader comes in handy because now I can go to the actual video, pull the video file in here, and then actually line it up. And in my editor, it's kind of weird, so I'll probably doctor this up a little bit. But I'm gonna start by getting where I know the audio starts and just looking at that transient there and then trying to match it with this transient. And then I'm gonna wanna position this down at the bottom of the screen. And I want this video to not lose very much, so I'm just Again, just doctoring the video up. Wow, I'm so glad I'm recording this because that almost never happens. Okay, I lined it up and it's relatively good. So I'm just gonna detach this audio because that's the audio from my recording on the computer and then this will just be the YouTube audio. Okay, and that's all I want, so I'm gonna kill the rest of this. Wow, okay, that's actually fine. Okay, so now, I mean, this is pretty much it. I mean, this is, you can literally export this video to Instagram, no problem. And you can upload it, just make sure you, you do landscape and it'll look great. Uh, the video will be high quality, it's from Sweetwater. Uh, the notes will scroll across the page. So you, if you wanted to transcribe the rest of the thing, you can make a video out of it. The only other thing that you're gonna wanna do that I'm not gonna show you on the screen is when you use an Instagram, this is fine for Instagram feed. When you do Instagram story, make sure that you have your project settings set to portrait. And it's gonna change this to something really tiny. And as you can see, um, you're gonna to wanna to start out the project that way. But 
what I normally do is I normally um, record. There's a app on my phone called AZ Screen Recorder Free, something like that. Just pull up SoundSlice.com on your phone, record your screen, and then pull the video in into your editor and actually edit it there. Because if you record it from your phone, then all the uh, the the sizing and everything will be good. So so to recap, we started out with our YouTube video, and we used 4K video downloader to to get it. We created our slice. We used drum tab, mapped everything out made our video and made our video of the actual notes, positioned the notes in the video, synced it up together and made sure that it was only using one audio. And the only step that we didn't do was actually exporting this video and putting it on Instagram. The only limitations you have there on, on the feed, it's a minute and on Instagram TV, it's 10 minutes. So again, for stories, I definitely recommend recording on your phone and getting that video in here and then using this audio against the portrait video. And that is it. So you made it to the end of the video. So now you have a basic understanding of how to select a video to transcribe, how to get started, and how to put that finished product on social media. So definitely leave me a comment or send me a DM if you hit any snags or roadblocks. Obviously there's gonna be more to the process. There's gonna be hiccups along the way, things like that. I'm happy to help, happy to be a resource for you. Good luck and have fun.